I used to come to the U.S. almost every day as a successful entrepreneur from Ensenada. I own a paint store and a, and a hardware store, plus working as a manager in a paint manufacturing company. I always came here for work and entertainment, but I never imagined that I would end in the U.S. as an illegal immigrant, looking for the way to survive due to the government corruption from my country of origin. It was not easy for me to adapt to a new culture where everything was different. Starting with a new language was hard to learn at the beginning, plus having new habits with food and qualifying for an apartment. The most sad part of being an immigrant for me was the big barrier to fight as an undocumented person without the right to have simple medical services, a social security number, or even own my own home as I did in Mexico. No matter what, I decided to stay here and do my best to be successful. But once again, happiness in my life was not on my side. I was working at Drug Baron Brewery downtown, and an acquaintance came to visit me at work. His name was Caesar. He looked like a nice guy, a friendly 19-year-old young man. I had met him in the park near my house, and we had casually talked. After that, he asked me to help him get a job. I introduced him to my boss, then fill an application and get the job. But Cesar never showed up. Finally, he showed up around three months later. He had come to ask me about staying in my house because his roommate had kicked him out. I told him that I, I knew him, but I didn't know him well enough to let him stay in my house. I saw his eyes tear up, and my heart broke. We took the bus home, and we went to the store to get a soda. When we got home, I started to watch TV. Caesar went to use the bathroom. Sometime later, I also did the same. I noticed that he had twisted the metal windows blinds in the bathroom. I was working more than 12 hours that day. I was so tired and I didn't think anything of it. I kept watching TV. Cesar turned on some music very loud. I turned it down, and he turned it up again. He was anxious. He wasn't the same person I'd met before, but I was so tired, I didn't pay attention. I saw the belt. I didn't see him. He was trying to chuck me with a bell from behind. I tried to say, are you playing or what? I turned my head and saw his face. His face was strange. His tongue was out. At that moment, I knew I was in danger. He tightened the belt. I couldn't breathe. I began to see black. When he realized that I was starting to faint, he took away the belt. He sat on my chest and started to stab me in the head with a pair of scissors. I don't remember screaming, but neighbors told me later I screamed really loud. Suddenly he stopped and grabbed his chest. He looked at me, scared. I must have had a lot of blood on my face. Oh, Sergio, what am I doing to you? He sound frightened, out of this world, almost no human. I saw his eyes roll back, and then I saw him put up the pair of scissors and he started stabbing me again. My instinct to survive was really strong. I thought only of surviving at that moment. I pushed him, trying to get him away. I couldn't see. My face was covered in blood. I was on my knees and I was able to grab his hand and bite as hard as I could. He doubled over, and I was able to run to the door and try to open it. I think I was screaming. He cashed up with me and began to stab me again. I can't remember much after that. I was bleeding profusely and losing consciousness. My after neighbors had heard the commotion and came down to see what the problem was. Caesar ran out the door, but my neighbors were able to catch him in the alley. 
I didn't realize how bad my condition was. I saw everything dark around me. I felt like I was floating, like an astronaut walking over the moon. I felt no weight on me, like I was ready to fly to another, to another world. I closed the door and locked it and tried to take a shower, but I, f but I felt my legs buckle. I looked in the mirror, but I could see only red. Then I realized how bad I was. I opened the door and saw Caesar face down. The neighbors were holding him down and called the police. I sank to the ground. Later, I saw a police officer, officer in front of me. What is your name? He asked me. I said, Sergio. Okay, Sergio, don't fall asleep, okay? Stay awake. I remember that, that, that I pictured my mom's face and I prayed to the Lord. Please give me the opportunity to see once again my mother. I love her so much. Then silence, a voice that said, he's in really bad condition. After that, I had a beautiful dream. I was flying into a bright light, a light I have, I have never seen here. It's a special brightness. A voice said, este no es tu tiempo. Tienes que regresar porque hay gente que te necesita. I was crying. The boss cut my tears. Then I felt a beautiful peace, a peace that I have never felt here in earth. My tears disappeared, and I felt relaxed like a baby in its mother's arms. Then I opened my eyes. I didn't know where I was. I saw a nurse sit, sit in front of me. I started screaming, and he ran away. A few moments later, a group of people were around me. One of the people told me I was in a coma, and, and at that moment, I returned back. Sergio, how do you feel? Oh, what do I have, I said. Don't move, Sergio, don't try to move. Oh, God, it's a lot of pain. The pain was like someone pulling out your internal parts. He needs morphine, somebody said. Okay, Sergio, you, you will feel better soon, okay? You are in the hospital because you have a lot of internal injuries. This is your nurse, and he will be with you 24 hours a day, okay? I didn't know that I was in intensive care and that my chance of survival was small. A little time later, the priest, the priest from the chapel came to me with his Bible in his hands. He started talking to me. Sergio, I have to be very honest with you. You don't have much chance to survive. And my desire is to give you your last rights. And you can go in peace. I was on morphine, so I thought, okay. Morphine was like floating. He took his Bible and started reading. When he finished, I told him about my dream. He said, that is not a dream. I saw his watery eyes and emotion all over his face. I did not die. I was stabbed 27 times that, not, that night all over my body. I was stabbed two times around my heart and two more that, that punctured my right lung. That rest were between my back, legs, head, and part of my face and arms. My recovery was slow and painful. I was horrified to be alone day, day and night. I used to keep a baseball bat in bed with me. I knew he was in jail, but I, I was afraid Caesar would come back to finish me. In a few months, I started to walk again. First, I just took a few steps. Two friends, one in each arm, took me very slow for a walk twice a day, morning and night. I still feel like it was yesterday. He stabbed my spine. I spent two months immobile with open wounds. I was unable to work for a long time. It was mainly because my wounds were so painful and numerous. Because of this, I lost my place to live and was homeless living on the street in downtown San Diego. Before, my body was strong, 
I was able to work hard in two jobs, lift heavy weights and move fast. After I was stable, my body became fragile. I feel numbness in different parts of my body and heart pain. I never went to therapy for my injuries because I didn't have health insurance. Even though the wounds have healed on the outside of my body, that worst one has not healed yet. I don't trust people. And sometimes I still have nightmares that people want to kill me. I used to be very friendly, had a lot of friends, and help others. I worked hard. My health was good. Now, my heart doesn't work so good, and I'm scared. I became afraid of my own friends. I am not the same person I was before. I used to ride the bus often, but now, if I have to, I take, his, I take seat at the very back so that no one is behind me. If I am walking, I am always looking around. And if there is someone behind me, I stop and let the person go first. Not because I'm being polite, but I don't trust them. I think they will hurt me. I'm afraid using the elevator with others. I always have my backpack on my own to protect my back. I feel like I'm living in the darkness, isolated. Caesar tried to cut my life forever, but I'm still fighting to survive. Go to Prestigio Asuna.